It's showtime. Go live. StreamYard says I'm live, but nobody else does. Oh, she's showing off. Hey, Maria Graham. Thank you for coming and welcome, 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 sissy. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, Thursdays, Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm sitting around wondering what I'm going to cook, what I'm going to eat. Then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week is just crazy. I had to pick up some food this morning. I had to go to two meetings. One was in the building. One was online. Crafty Leo, thank you for coming and welcome. Rachel, unbiased LLC. I sent you down there with my tent, with my paint, painting all over the sidewalk. Don't be getting that all on the ground. Almost homesteading with Janet. Oh, Miss T recommended. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate Miss T. I'm going to get Miss T. I see her crocheting. I see her crocheting. If she can crochet, she can quilt. For show, for show, for show. Rudy. Rude Irahita, thank you for coming and welcome. My Renaissance grandma, let me try to see if I can pull this up on here because I can see what you all are doing in the chat. And I was about to be ready, 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 ready. And Crafty Leo, oh, you guys, I have not been to the post office yet. But I'm Ellen Maria. Maria's showing off, talking about it's 80 degrees in South Carolina. She's working 64 in her garden, 64 degrees in Arizona. I'll take, actually, it was 64 degrees here in Connecticut this afternoon. I am going to, to commit something. I actually moved my walker so that you guys won't see it when I walk, go over to the sewing machine. But some kind of way, I'm going to take my walker or my cart and a cane and go down the steps and go to my garden this weekend. 83 in Georgia. Whoa. Crafty Leo, I didn't know you were in Georgia. I thought you were in the DMV in Maryland or somewhere. Oh, you guys. I'm jealous. How many of you are gardening? My Renaissance grandma, she says hello. Hello, sis. How are you doing? I am. What is my phone doing? I don't know. I look down and. Oh, something crazy. So, upcoming. Because I want to tell you guys something. I'm not ready today. Let me turn the volume down. I'm not ready today because almost homesteading. Where are you, Janet? Almost homesteading. You probably already homesteading and doing the darn thing. I was homesteading and I didn't know it. I was just living my life. Living my life years ago. Just bought some land and things started happening. And next thing you know, I had chickens and septic tanks and wells to build and everything. You shouldn't be gardening, but you ain't. I saw all that stuff you have, Renaissance Grandma. How many of you would like to see this handicapped gardener, what I've done? My things that I've done, I found a little spider plant that broke off. It was doing nothing. All of a sudden, it's growing all over the place. Oh, but before I show you what I'm doing, let me first say thank you, Mods, for being here. And wait a minute. Let me... Mike's chaotic gardening. You and that squirrel and whatever you were saying that he was doing. I'm trying to figure... Okay. It, it is. I, I didn't say unbiased in blue at first. So Mike said that squirrels, let me finish greeting everybody. Those of you who are here the first time, 
Thank you for coming. I hope you like it. I hope you'll stay. We do lots of fun things. I myself am part of six living generations who have been gardening, cooking from scratch, doing the arts, quilting, sewing, you name it. All of us, all of us, the 20 year old has her own little baking business and nobody else will come online. My sister Joanne Stevens is a glass artist, but they make me do all the talking and they won't, yes, splooting. Yes, Mr. Hershey splutes, he's splooting. He, I splooted him away back there because ever since he brought his little behind from Auntie Joanne and Uncle Roscoe's house, when I tell him to stop barking, he thinks that means no, I stop when I get ready. Like somebody else's daughter, Angel. He just does what he wants to. Crafty Leo says, thanks for hitting the thumbs up button, you guys. And I want everybody to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, guess what? Look at the above. I have 1,500 family members now. Why? Because good friends become family, and family is everything. If I run out of gas, you guys, I started going to, for those of you who are here just starting, I had a complete knee replacement exactly four weeks ago. So I was doing my exercises at home. Honey, I went in yesterday. They told me to do them three times a day. Yesterday were pushing things and poking things. And it was hurting too. I'm uh, like, I was feeling some kind of way about it. And so now I'm doing all these things. Plus I did some gardening. Would you guys like, how many of you are gardening? Put a one in the chat. And how many of you do other arts and crafts? Put a two in or put a one and a two and a two and a one. Thank you. Thank you, Unbiased. You know what? I saw you yesterday putting those hands on the jacket. I don't know if you know, but that is my original logo with a pair of hands to signify the family traditions with a Z. And you like the same colors that I do. Purple's my favorite color and then kind of teal turquoise. And because I have to get my big rooster, I saw you stanking up the bowling alley when I woke up from a nap last night. Miss Patty's Kitchen, thank you for coming and welcome. So, Unbiased LLC, I wanted to show you the resident elephant over here. And most elephants don't have their trunk up like this. Is this like your logo? Oh, look, he's dusty. He was behind that chair. But now I have to use my dust cycle that the chair is really for, not holding a painting. So I got him out so you can see him. Da -da 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 -da. He's trumpeting. Rachel Unbiased. The flyest. I saw you painting and doing your art to do something. Everybody can do something with their hands. And if it's painting a rock, painting a rock. So my gardening is stinking up the place, Big Rooster. My gardening this year, I use some um, fertilizer that I got on Amazon not the one that goes to Arrow Garden. And it's like, didn't do anything to my plants for the winter grow off. So it's, it's warm enough here, 50, 60 degrees. I can plant stuff right in the ground. As soon as I get somebody to walk me down there and get the leaves up, I have some bags. I'm going to get a couple of tin raised beds because a couple of them broke but I want you to see this. Look at this, you guys. I just put this in there. Oops, it's not all the way down. I got some lettuce yesterday, not lettuce, celery. And I said, I'm not planting seeds in Connecticut 
this fast. But look, it's starting to come up already. So I'll keep her in the house until it gets a little warmer. My dad, I grew up in Connecticut. So we didn't plant our gardens until May 30th. But it's like a climate change going on. Yankee's sister up where she lives today, it's like 68 degrees. Kay Renee, hello. Chatting and working and listening in. And keep working out. Miss Patty, you keep working out. Everybody who's working out, work out. I work out. I just don't show it. I just don't show it. Karen's little garden. Thank you for coming and welcome. What did you ask me that I had an answer to? Something. Did you have a question for me, Karen? About And thank you for being a member of the Friends and Family Club. If any of you would like to help the channel to grow and increase our content, it's $1.99 a month. And where, where you click on the channel, you go across and there's a little dollar sign, I think, and you can join the, you can join the Friends and Family Club. Thank you, Crafty Leo, for, for gifting five memberships this, this month. Coach Mary Ma, thank you for being a member. So, let's have, I didn't see any ones or twos. I know some of you are gardening. Maria Graham, you just told me you are. Hey, Val Creates. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Big Rooster, I'm saving your pants for something special because I can get those cuts out of them without piecing them. So, don't think I didn't appreciate it or I'm not talking about it. I have a special, special, special program. As a matter of fact... I'm making a jean skirt out of my granddaughter's husband's, a, a pair of his jeans that I cut off to make some bags for some people who have donated three or more pairs of jeans to me. And I'm going to cut it and make a denim skirt. And some of your jeans are going to go in that little middle piece where I put, piece the jeans back together. So I have a, Maria, we're doing well. Hope all is well. Oh, that must be, I'm not at the bottom of the chat over here. Let me go to the bottom. You guys, let's congratulate Maria Graham and her husband. They've been married 54 years. Yay. Congratulations. They went out to dinner. Mommy's favorite restaurant. Hello, mother. If you're in the bushes, you probably are. Because your nurse likes to watch on Thursdays, and you guys usually watched together, and then and then she sees me doing something and calls in her order, which I was actually working on today. I was working on it today. So, if you're there, I'm working on your black neck bone pillow, and the handles are done to it. So. Miss Patty's Kitchen is saying, Happy anniversary, Maria and hubby. Big Rooster's telling Crafty to watch her mouth. <laughs> the mouth of all things to watch it. So I want to ask you guys a, a question. An icebreaker. Because I went somewhere with one of my friends. And by the way, those of you who are celebrating Ramadan, Happy Ramadan. And which brings me to my question. And the question is this. Can people with different points of view be friends, be real friends, be good friends? Because I went with somewhere with one of my friends today. She's Jewish. I'm Christian. She has a different political party than me. She... Almost homesteading, saying Ramadan Mubarak to any who celebrate. Yes, what she said. I may not be able to pronounce all the words. Maria Graham says, yes, they can. Um, we, we don't agree on masks because I have 
severe respiratory issues, I can. And I want to protect my mother. I wear a mask. She doesn't. She does. It's just underneath her nose. But we are, we're, we're like sister, we're sister friends, which I want to show you, even though she doesn't celebrate Easter, she's always the first one to give me a Christian holiday card. And this one says, joyful Easter blessings. This is the day that the Lord has made. Psalm 118, chapter in the 24th verse. And she says to Ellen Hershey, and I can't read her writing, whatever it says. And then she says, Joan and Jasmine. Um, that's another thing. I'm allergic to cats. I am crazy allergic to cats. She has a cat that's bigger than Mr. Hershey. But we're besties. We're besties. So I just wanted to say that you don't have to have the same beliefs, religion, but you know what? We all live in this world together and we can get along. I say that as far as peace in the world, peace in the country, peace in the neighborhood, and peace in the chats. Some of you who are quilters, uh, let me know if you're interested in learning, wanting to learn how to, this is what they call puzzle pieces. Why? Because it's actually the word is called meandering. And once you get your quilt sandwich put together, you make all these, but you make them by heart and you practice on a piece of paper, piece of chalk, or you can buy a template. I think I bought a template to show you guys, but I'm not sure where it is right now. It's over there somewhere. These are my daughter's birthday presents. I forgot to, I made her pillowcases in animal print and some gold letters, but her brother took her package to her and I forgot to put it in. Um, almost homesteading with Janet. It's, it's not complicated. This one is tiny. You can make it as big or as small as you want, as you want. If you're interested, we can do maybe a live if you guys would like to come up and we could do it. And what, what you do is you train your body to make little little lines you just like after a while you learn how to sew a quarter inch seam i can tell in a minute if a quarter inch seam is off and but you but you learn you learn after a while so if whoever i forgot almost home study janet some of the things i've done this is um a denim apron made from scratch, no pattern. This is an embroidery patch with an embroidery machine. I didn't do this one. One of my friends did with her embroidery machine. This is a denim bag I made for my granddaughter's birthday. I've had like four family birthdays in the last three, four weeks. And it has a pocket inside that's made out of jeans. I'll show it to you for those are new who are new. The bag is made out of seven and a half inch blocks. I just put a small jean pocket inside. Want to see something cute? My mother has a family tradition. Whenever she gives the girls a pocketbook, she always puts a dollar in it. So Rita has a dollar in here. I put a needlepoint bottom in here with some fake suede to stabilize the bottom. And because I love my only granddaughter so much, and I know I won't be having any more grandchildren. My grandchildren are adults. One has children. The little piece of leather in the center is from Auntie Joanne. And this is just with scraps. Oh, this is just with scraps. I 
I have something now. This I wanted I wanted unbiased to see. Ma'am, I didn't copy off your you were showing a bag very similar to this. If you guys are interested in making it, this one is called a tote a plenty, pockets of plenty, because the it not only and I have all the measurements, you guys. If you want to make this size bag, this size pocket, let me put this down a little so I don't have to hold my arms up so much. So this one, you sew on square. This one, the pocket is down. I collect old buttons. Remember, mommy gave me some buttons, but these are these two are off of an old blazer. This one is really old. But what I want what I want to show you is how that's just a functional bag. It's very pretty. But this bag I have shown in a quilt show because it's considered functional art. Why? Because the buttons are so fancy. You see around the little trim, around the um, pockets. I just did that with um, a stitch on one of my machines that does fancy stitches. I like black and brown and gold, uh, Coach Mary Ma. But what I like is that this is double-sided, and now I like the black part better, so I'm going to make some box bags. But I made an ensemble. I made like four or five bags that match with this. This one also has a padded bottom. And what what's really different about this bag Oh, and I had one of those magnetic, one of those magnetic closures in here. Maria Gray, Auntie, you do beautiful work. Nice bag. But you know what? You they're just like just like there are utility quilts and there are show quilts. There are utility bags and show bags. I made this bag for my granddaughter to take to work every day, to take her lunch in it to take a basketballs to her son's games. I made for her to work every day. This one, I could work with it every day. It has like a different kind of black fabric in it. I ended up putting a tie on it because I put so much stuff in it, it broke, it broke the metal closure. But I wanted to show you inside the entire bottom is also a lots of lots of pockets and you know why i have this one bag i have this one bag unbiased because i had my embroidery machine out and i put my penny panky name on it the things that i don't put my name on i have i end up selling it i end up selling it why because Oh, the leaf trim is super fancy. Oh, this is what I forgot to show you. Oh, and this is what made this, elevated this to art. You see this strap? This is actually a piece of real calf leather. I saw you crafty Leo with your leather. But see, everybody doesn't want to pay for it. You can't put this on everything. So these two, and you know what? This strap is big enough that I can put it on my shoulder. It's extra. It's a one and a half inch. It's cotton. And it even has the leather trim on there like Big Rooster. Yep. I have one. I put Mr. Hershey in. I, I have one. Deborah Garrett says it's pretty. Thank you. I have a ton of this fabric because every time it goes on sale, I go buy three or four more yards. Hello, Deborah Garrett. And anyone I didn't see to say hello to, you have part of that rare fabric. Yes, you do. The black on your pocket. I put some of that, that in there because I like pretty things. So how many of you, let me see it. I have some notes. If I did all my notes, Let's make a spring bag. And, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you guys. Unbiased was, if you go to her channel, she was doing some painting. 
and she was painting her her elephant on her bag. I used to have a lot of elephants, but I gave them all away when I downsized. I downsized from four acres, like 4,000 square feet, to this apartment with a total of about 800 square feet. But I make it work, and I have, I have a community garden down around the way. And what did Mike do that was funny? Mike said something was funny. So, Mr. Carey and Mr. Hershey, he put on what uh, one of my neighbors asked me today. She, she said, Ellen, did you lose weight? You would have lost weight too if they gave you that medicine after my surgery. I couldn't keep anything down. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I think I did. I needed to. I didn't, I, I, I don't, I don't gain weight when I'm at Auntie Joanne's house. I cook, she fixes the plates. Nikki, the everyday life of an OCD, it's chick. It's a gorgeous day outside. So she's in the garden getting chores done. I'm getting some tall tin beds like you, Nikki, this year. Hey, Salon Diva. Thank you for coming and welcome. Your garden looks gorgeous. Just like you, everything's in place. All your her. All your everything. Oh, you were in here, Salon Diva. I cut up. Oh, you're gonna. You're gonna. You're going to. I can't reach him without falling out of the chair, Salon Diva. Last week, I cut up four Ralph Lauren dress shirts so that I can make something a skirt out of them. You know, like your picture on your page with your pearls on and your shirt. Well, I used to wear my pearls and my shirt to work. I don't work anymore. I cut four shirts up. All right, you guys, let's go make a beautiful spring tote. Mother, I have your daddy's quilt. Well, maybe before I do that, let me see if I can. Ugh. Ugh. It doesn't look like it. This new cotton that I use to, this new cotton that I use to put in my quilts, it's it's woven flat. It's it's eighty percent cotton, twenty percent um, something else, polyester, but it's lightweight. It's not lightweight when you got this whole thing. This quilt is a king size quilt it's like i think about 120 by 120 i can't my arms i can't open it and it's my mother had one shirt left when her daddy passed and it was this and i cut i fussy cut each little square out then i found some antique fabrics that looked old like back in the day and i made this quilt for her it's really unique. I didn't see anything wrong with it, Mommy, so I'm just going to bring it back. And I think you did this because it's time for me to give you a new quilt. I haven't given you a new king-size quilt in the last 10 years, so I will give you another one. And it smells so good, and it's so well-loved. Um, they took some pictures of her grandson, her oldest grandson, visiting her which is my son. Oh, and this was machine quilted with feathers on it. But I'm going to bring this to you when I come for Easter, Mom, because I like seeing your quilts on the bed with all of your grandkids and great-grandkids crawling on them. Mike's Chaotic Gardening is saying, hello, Mother. Hello, Mother. So let's go over. And you guys, it'll be a small giveaway but next Thursday, I will list it, and it will be for s subscribers. Now, the difference between members and subscribers is that members pay $1.99 a month. They really patrons of the channel and help it grow. But others send Cash App. Others send gifts. Others send fabric, mail things. And I appreciate all of that. So if you've ever given anything to the channel and you're subscribed to the channel, 
Why? Because that's what I'm celebrating. 1,500 subscribers. So Rudy, Irajita, next week you come and I'll try to think of some questions by then so that we can have a little giveaway. And what I would like to do is instead of giving like a $5 cash app, I want to make something small like something that I made, something that you have of Auntie Ellen that you can keep forever, a little keepsake. Um, for those of you who are new, we make fabric postcards, we paint rocks, we have so much fun. Auntie Joanne has some rocks in her in her yard. I was out there tearing up stuff. The but her cat is demanding dinner, Mr. Hershey. So this is, looks like about the only groceries I'm gonna have in the next couple of weeks. But I'm going out there because my Swiss chard should be coming back. Last year when I was gone, I had surgery. Last and somebody went and I was saving my Swiss chard so that I could save the seeds. Some little son of a gun went out there and chopped down all of my Swiss chard. That's what happens in a community garden. But that's life. I'm not hungry. So I'm going to walk over here slowly, slowly, slowly. As I turn, you will see some of my cups. Oh, guess what? All of my peppers are up except, except the fish pepper, the lipstick pepper, the pumpkin spice pepper, the scotch bonnet, and the big gym pepper are two weeks old, and they're coming up. They're coming up so. That's what you see, this blight over here. That's my my uh, my reflective thing. I have some beets. I think I'm just going to direct sow my beets out there. My beets out there. So what bag are we going to make today? This, I'm going to put this over here. We're going to, I've shown you this rough applique. What is rough applique? I just took some fabric, put some fusible on the back of it, and just cut it out freehand, just freehand. And I made, I don't even know how many petals. I just cut them until they filled up the, cir the, the center. Then I cut out a little round thing, and I put some little embroidery thread in it. Then I sewed some pieces around it, and this is going to be the pocket for the front of a bag, this bag. And then this, I wanted to keep it like to a half yard of fabric. So the fabric is, this fabric is 36 inches wide if I cut a yard. So a half yard is 18 inches, but I didn't want the bag to be tall and narrow. This is how I originally cut it out. So I changed it. But it meant that I'm going to have a seam in the bottom. But that's okay. Because I want this bag to be nice and wide. So I'm going to put... Oh, and then... I don't know if you could see it real close. I just took some random stitch on my sewing machine and sew these pieces down after I fuse them down with the, with, um, with the iron. So that's what we're going to work on today. And this one is actually, if I get it there in time, going out to, which is back again, pretty flower. Thank you. Then I, I was working on something else and I took out this beautiful batik, but this is actually the back of it. This is the center. And I'm going to make a pocket for the inside. So to make a pocket, uh-oh, did I reverse them? You know, the good thing about batiks, the good thing about batiks is the same thing that's bad about batiks. And 
it's that you can hardly the fabric is good you can use either side but i can tell this one is a little duller than the other one and sometimes with pockets it depends on how much money i spend on pockets I'm going to put this over so that you can see when I turn on this sewing machine. And that's why I got this sewing machine recently. Uh, it's a Singer beginner machine. It's a heavy duty machine because all these heavy jeans that I've been sewing lately, I don't want to tear up my little my little collector machines that I have. I have a bunch of little antique machines called featherweights. I have my grandmother's machine, Roxy. It's back in that corner. And as soon as I get my other camera set up, I will be able to go over there and start showing you. So what I'm going to do is leave like a two or three inch opening up here and then sew around the edges to make a foam pocket to go in this cute little bag. This cute little bag. And since it's spring, I wanted to make something with spring flowers. So I've got the sewing, I've got this, the needle in the center position. And my stitch length, I'm gonna make two, 2.5 centimeters millimeters, whatever meters they are. And I'm going to put two or three stitches Oh, I was just making sure that you could, guys could see me. I say you guys. I'm me and my me and my pronouns and nouns. Guys refers to males and females. And it's the same as y'all. So when you get to the corner, you leave the needle down and turn. And this is just a simple bag. So it's just a half a yard of fabric by the width of the fabric. And they don't have to be any specific size. You can make them any size you want. The one that Big Rooster has was actually pretty big, but I made it a really wide bottom, so you can't <laughs> uh, pause a really wide bottom so that it would hold a lot of heavy stuff. This is a, a heavy duty one, and you can put just about anything in it, and you don't have to worry about it. That bag will be around when I'm not. It's really a heavy duty bag. So that. Sorry, I can't see the chat, you guys. Hey, Miss Shirley OG Gardner. You guys, Miss Shirley OG Gardner will be going on at seven tonight. My sister up there in Ohio. We're making just a little bag, sewing some stuff. Miss Shirley, I know you can get those fingers out and do some stuff. I know you got some things you've been watching that you've learned over the years. You're just playing shy about it. So... Uh, vision preparedness goes on later. Odom goes on later. And you guys check each other out. So I'm going to put this down. And the other thing, by next week, because I wanted you guys to be able to see over here. I don't know if you can, though. Yes, you can now. I I have to talk to Crafty Leo and R Rachel Unbiased. They use all these cameras, multiple cameras. Me, I can barely get, keep this eye going on with one camera. With one camera. So those of you who have never sewn anything, this is how we're making a pocket for this cute little bag and we're going to snip the corner why because so that it'll lie flat when i turn it inside out 
snip the corner, snip the corner, and snip the fourth corner. Now, Crafty Leo, I'm not throwing these on the floor, Crafty Leo. What is the white fabric called? Are you talking about unbleached muslin? I like unbleached muslin. Hey, Lorraine T. Y'all, Lorraine T. just bought a new house. She has a sewing room, and she hasn't been around because she's been buying four and five sewing machines. Or were you talking about this 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 fabric maria graham this fabric is just a double-sided quilted fabric it's just a plain color uh tan so now i'm going to take this pocket and turn it inside out Turn it inside out. I didn't leave a very big opening, but that's okay. It's big enough. This is pretty. It's almost too pretty, this fabric, to be inside. But I had it out, and I had more of it than I thought I did. So I'm sharing it, and whoever gets this lovely bag will have a lovely pocket. That's double-sided. Sometimes I just put like unbleached muslin, like Maria Graham was saying. I always keep one of these plastic chopsticks here for turning things in an inside out. So I'm going to push, poke the pockets out. Poke the pockets out. Poke the corner, I mean, po poke the pockets, the corners out. Poke the corners out and then see this little part down here I'm actually not going to sew it batik as a fabric is very thin and the way they make it they wash it so many times so many times one of the things that I do is finger press this inside down which means you just put your fingernail down your fingernail down then when you sew it on the sewing machine, you won't see it. So this is going to be the top of the part pocket. So I'm just going to put a fancy little, not a fancy, just some little edge stitching just to make it look nice, to make it look finished. And most of you work during the day. You're working in your garden. So this doesn't have to be. I'm going to make my stitch length two or three because I'm sewing through several thicknesses. I can hear it chugging. Let's check and see. So I'm just doing the top. Back stitch. Back stitch. So we will just work on this a little bit. I was snipping, actually stuffing some pillows in my bedroom, and I took my little snips in there so I don't have them. Okay, so now what I've done on this bag to sew the top down and the bottom, I'm going to just edge stitch the the. So I folded this down. Let me just show you guys. I, I fold this down about half an inch. Then I folded this down about an inch and a half. And what I'm going to do, this makes it reinforced at the top. So that when I make this bag, it's going to support a heavy, heavy handle. So I'm... Back stitching. Any question, you guys? Hi, Miss Patty. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's way back. Let me get to the bottom. To the bottom. But I want to show you guys just this is just a square piece of fabric. 
square piece of fabric. And now I'm just sewing along the edge to hold it down because what I'm going to do with this top part, I'm going to put a nice heavy duty, a nice heavy duty handle on it so that it'll hold a lot. This will be a nice bag for Easter or Mother's Day for those of you who have time to sew something. So I'm going to backstitch. And here's the other one, the other side, because I'm going to sew the pocket on next. And I don't want these to move. So. And you guys, you don't have to, I, you know, some people, how they're holding the fabric like this, you really don't have to. All you have to do is hold the end, but sometimes we get up there, we choke the fabric to death. You really don't have to. The machine will pull it through. It'll pull your finger through, too, if it gets too close. So you don't want to get too close. So I'm going to backstitch here. Then I like to just keep sewing. <clears throat> Excuse me. It saves fabric. And I'm going to sew the cut this little bit in here. Then I'm going to do a little edge stitching above there. Why do I have to know? Why am I doing it? It just makes it look nice. It makes it look finished. It makes it look like you cared put a little time in it. So I'm going to put like a little eighth of an inch seam. You really don't have to backstitch, it's just a habit because this seam is going to be turned under. I just want you to see, we've been over about 10 minutes, but I want you to see how quickly this bag is coming together. And I make, I make cross body bags for guys too, use guys. So this one is done. And I just wanted you to see, let's see, I came over here about 4.30. So we'll go until 5 o'clock. And now I'm going to sew this little bit up here. What I do with this fabric, several stores sell these, like Hobby Lobby. I don't know if Michael's does. I know Joann's. But when they go on sale, I'll go buy two or three yards. Why? Because I can make four or five bags. Sometimes I cut this up into five inch pieces and I make the handles by hand. Coach Mary Ma's bag, I made the handles by hand. But what I want to show you the next next part is how you find the center of this bag. So any bag, anything that you're sewing. Anything that you're sewing, like this bag, this is the outside, this is the inside. You can barely see it. You just fold it in half and put a pin there. I fold this one in half. I have to look and see and put a pin to hold it. 0.52, 1 and 2. I'll be so glad when I can get out in my garden. I, You want to hear something funny, you guys? For support for trellises, I already, I already have three walkers out there. Every time they operate on something and say, hey, Yankee Sister Homestead. I heard it was 68 degrees up in your woods today. Lorraine T is speaking to everyone. You guys, Lorraine T is originally from Connecticut. And she and Yankee Sister and I had a meetup a couple couple of years ago. They, 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 they owe me a meetup. Anybody that's nearby. Uh, just a minute. Oops, you guys. I knocked 
my I knocked my pocket on the floor and I'm moving slowly so that I don't trip over anything. You just came in from garden planting onions. Good. So when you, I've been cooking your onions that you gave me. So now I'm going to sew this pocket. This pocket. Yankee says, so you put your onions in the ground? I know you did because it's so warm out. So I'm going to sew the, I mean, not sew, fold this pocket in half. I really don't have to though, because you know why? The way that I put this little center part, I know that's the center. So just to keep everything in order, I'll put a pin at the bottom as well. And Coach Mary Ma, this is how I lined your back, your 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 bag up. So this piece is going on the outside kind of close to the top. Why? Because I'm putting this like close to the top up here. See, that's why I put a pin. I had it turned sideways because I want to put a wide bottom down there. Not a wide bottom, say two and a half inches here, two and a half inches here. So I see these two pins are lined up across from each other. So that means that the bag is straight. Also, I'll decide whether I'm going to put a button on this bag. Oh, that's another thing you buy, you guys, when, when the stores have sales. That's when you get your buttons, things like that, because buttons are expensive. They're expensive, but I'll show you, I won't get them, but I, I have a jar. I buy the big ones for these bags ahead of time. And I even had a few over here. I won't take them out, but so what I'm going to do is that's pinned down. I'm just going to put these in. Okay, that's not straight. So I'm going to put my thumb here. And I'm going to put my thumb here to make sure they're about the same space. Now on this one, I'm not, hmm, I'm not putting any extra stitching because this block, this block is already top stitched. So let's get it started. Cut the string and I'm going to start a little above the pocket, go back and forth, pull the string out. I don't want it to get tangled up. I use, I'm actually using a hundred percent cotton thread. Of course, polyester thread is stronger and I use that sometime on my, on my bags, but you see this big tall thing of thread. This is what I use for quilting my quilts, and it's very expensive. It's very heavy duty, and you can't, um, you can't, I, I just don't change my thread. I just leave that one full and fill trays. I, I leave that one because I, I sew with cream color. Then I fill these up with like black and blue because I'm doing a lot of denim, some light blue, and a lot of cream color. Then I just have to fill the bobbins up. I don't have to keep going, um, you know, stopping, starting, stopping, starting. 
So, I have a stylus. A stylus is a pointy thing that you put down so that sometimes the edges of fabric when it's thick get, get, get kicked up. But I just grab whatever I have handy. It could be a pair of scissors, a pair of snips, whatever. Now we're getting to the part where this little bottom wasn't sewn. And so I want to make sure that I have it all tucked in you know the opening where i turned the other pocket so making sure i got both edges sometimes it you take a little minute to double check things and you find out that you don't end up having to rip it out because something went wrong because you were in such a hurry to get to the corner that you, you know, something was out and you didn't see it. Sometimes like on here, you see the little black is showing, but that's okay. It just shows that it's a double layer. Ouch. That was a pretty good stick. By the way, you guys, it's not bleeding, but some of you have heard me say before that if you ever stick yourself, the only thing that removes blood is peroxide in your own saliva, just saying. So now I'm going to back stitch again and I'm going to go around and stitch it again because I want you to be able to put whoever gets this bag to put whatever they want into it. And it's not going to come apart in 10, 20 years or whatever. And the thread is not going to wear out either. So I'm just making a double line of stitching. Trying to sew as close to the other one as possible. Okay. So overalls. I thought I saw something about overalls. You guys, start saving your old jeans and stuff, old shirts. It's really fun making stuff, repurposing things. And one, th one thing I want to tell you, when you're turning this around, make sure that you don't have it doubled up under there. That is the most aggravating thing to be going through and then find out that you have something doubled up. I often roll mine over to make sure that I don't do that. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes I have to pick it out anyway. That's life. That's life. You know what my dad used to say? He used to have all these common sense things. He used to say that's why they put erasers on pencils. Because mistakes happen. Life happens. So I'm just going to the edge of this foot was kicking that up. And it looks like I'm pulling it, but I'm not. I'm just guiding it. So that's not going to come apart. And when you finish sewing, you always put, when you finish sewing, you always bring your needle to the highest position. It releases the thread so that you don't get fabric. You wonder, I mean, thread jams. You wonder why the thread gets caught in the jib, bobbin sometimes. If you go backwards, it does that. So look, that's the pin that stabbed me. And we have the front of this done already. Now, 
We're going to end here. How many seven and a half inch blocks of jean material? Oh, that's what it was. That bag. Oh, that bag. Let, let me let me let me hold on one minute because I want to make sure. I want to make sure, Karen. You know what they say in construction, measure twice and cut once. I want to make sure that these are seven and a half inch blocks because I know when I make my quilts, I like nine and a half inch blocks. That's why I'm saving big roosters jeans. So why don't we measure? Because we know there's a quarter inch seam on either side. So yeah. So it's six and a half inches now. So that means we started with seven and a half inches and we made a quarter inch seam on each side. Kelly, I bring it every day. I seen you walking around when your husband was inside somewhere and you were walking doing stuff. So yes, three, oh look at Miss, Miss Unbiased. Three across and six down. That's correct. And then when you get down in the corner, once you sew the corner to make it square, I like to make a two and a half inch line to put my leg up. I will. Um, I've been I've been pretty good today. I actually took a nap this afternoon because I was tired from this morning. So again, this is just a made up bag. <laughs> um, Karen's little Karen's guard. Oh, and one thing that I did, you know, when I put the handles in from the inside, I let them hang down a little bit on the inside. Why? Just to give it something more to grip because I sew these, when you sew straight across and put a facing in, you want to give it a couple rows of stitches. It's just me, just something I do. And I made French seams. I made them real thick, five eighths of an inch. Why? Because this bag sits up by itself. And I like that. It just sticks up by itself. And when you got something in it, it's not turning over and all your stuff coming back. I just make stuff up. Food, same thing, cooking. So I want to thank each and every one of you. And don't forget, we will, I'll be live Saturday at six o'clock. Ego Amote, mother, I love you. I will call you, mommy, in a few minutes. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the content out if you like it. There's not too many old ladies on here. Hey, Devil Dog, Belt Loop 29. Thanks for coming and welcome. Semper Fi, dude. Semper Fi, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. What's up? So we're just about to cut it short here. I appreciate everybody. Uh, do what you love, love what you do. You know, be kind to somebody. Smile, look somebody in the eye, make somebody's day. You know, we all are in this world together and we, we got to make it work. Love you guys. See you Saturday.